All right, today we're just going to look at um, how we're going to start using the Romy robot um, to get us to get our programming team up and be able to test things at home. Um, the Romy was developed by um, WPI Lib to um, work with their software to be able to be as a cheap, inexpensive, safe, easy to use um, robot platform so we don't have to have like people taking home a bunch of our old robots and driving 120 pound robots around in their living rooms. We can drive this little two pound thing around in the living room and have much less chance of anybody getting injured. Uh, much easier to run this on your kitchen table or floor and still be able to do a lot of the um, programming tasks and a lot of the learning that we would normally do in the lab. And it's actually a lot easier because we can have multiple people doing it at the same time. We can all have our own robot. The batteries are cheaper, they're easier to charge, all of that stuff. Um, the This page here in the in the doc has some of like the links to the different Romy kits. This is the Romy itself. It's basically just this little plastic thing, um, this little plastic board. It has some motor mounts. The motors have encoders on them. That's one of the biggest things that's helpful for using this for FRC use um, so that we can track how far each wheel spun and we can track how fast they're spun. So we can do all of that um, all of the control logic that we knew for driving our actual robot and navigating it autonomously and kind of all of that in a very similar way on this because it has the same sort of sensors that we have on the robot. So it has um, encoders and a gyro so we can figure out how fast we've gone, how far we've gone, and how far we've turned. Um, so we can make the Romy do the different paths. So we should be able to have people doing the different autonomous paths for the skills challenges. So they can do like the barrel race and the slalom and all of those um, at home with the tiny robots. Um, so on Spectrum, we have 11 of them. So I'll have one so that I can keep um, so I can keep it here and test things and help people out. And then we'll have 10 that we'll be able to check out to students. Um, right now, I need to get more of the Raspberry Pis and the SD cards and some of the other stuff that go, that's going to be in the kit that we give out, that we check out to you. Um, but we have all of the bases and the little black control board um, in stock already. Um, there's a full like hour of code video that's really cool that walks you through a bunch of the stuff that you can do on it. It's definitely long. It's actually like three hours and it goes through like all of the different things you can do in WPI lib. Um, it's a really good video if you're interested in any of the FRC control stuff. The WPI lib team did a great job on it. Um, but we'll be walking through a lot of this over the next couple months with the uh, Romy robot. So what we're going to actually get, which I'm hopefully going to have kitted up. Um, or we'll make sure we can have people come to, we'll have a few people come to the lab and get kitted up this weekend probably, is the um, the Romy chassis, the Romy controller that come together, and then a Raspberry Pi, and then we'll also have a um, eight AA battery rechargeable set. So the Romy takes six, so you have a couple spares. We need to charge them relatively regularly, but these kits work pretty well for that. I've been testing it at home and it seems to work all right. Um, a USB Wi-Fi adapter. So the way that you connect to the Romy is over Wi-Fi. And if you don't have a separate Wi-Fi adapter, you end up having to disconnect from the internet every time you want to like run code on your Romy, which is very annoying because we wouldn't be able to like be on the stream together or be on Discord or Zoom or whatever. Um, so USB Wi-Fi adapters are cheap. They're like seven bucks a piece. So we're just going to include one in all of the kits. Um, and it should work with Mac or Windows to be able to have just a second Wi-Fi. So you should be able to stay connected to your home network and have that Wi-Fi adapter connected to the Romy. Um, that's what I'm going to do right now, actually, in our um, for our demos and stuff today. And then um, the SD card that will image the um, WPI lib um, Raspberry Pi image onto that has all the software that's needed to run the Romy so that it can communicate with the um, VS Code stuff that we install and all that, um, and a USB micro SD card reader because at some point they're going to update that image and they'll all be in people's houses and you'll need to be able to put the SD card in your computer to update that image. Um, and we can do all that relatively simply. Micro Center makes it cheap, so like none of this is too expensive. The batteries are like 25, the USB adapter is like 8. The micro SD card, I think, is four, and the micro SD card reader is only like a dollar. Um, 
And then the Romy kit itself, um, without the Raspberry Pi, I think it's 100 when you have the FRC discount. And the Raspberry Pi is somewhere between 25 and 35, depending on where we end up buying them. So the whole kit's like eh, 175 or so. Um, so hopefully no one damages them because they're not like super cheap, but they're a lot cheaper than a whole FRC robot or any part of an FRC control system, seeing as the Robo Rio that we would normally have to use to be able to test any sort of robot is 400 by itself. Um, okay, so that's kind of what the hardware looks like that will be given out. Then we can also, everyone will need to have a computer at their house to be able to actually do the programming. Um, if some of our students don't, we have some laptops that we can check out to people if necessary. Um, and then you can use a gamepad, but it's not required anymore because there are keyboard bindings in the um, simulator slash, I think they're calling it glass now is the interface name. Um, and so you can imitate a keyboard or imitate a joystick or gamepad with the keyboard now. So you can drive the Romy around without a gamepad. So you don't have to have one, but a lot of people already have something in their house because um, most of the game pads from ps4 or xbox all can connect to a pc somehow um okay so what does this look like and what are we going to be able to do with it so this is the this is the Romy that i have here um on my desk um so it looks just like the picture there's little like ball casters on the bottom um the batteries get put in down here and they just take six double a um, the cool thing about this, hopefully, is this whole thing is kind of built to be um, added onto. So they do have like a little, you can buy like a little robot arm kit, but it's like $80 and it's not a ton of stuff there. It's like a few servos um, and a little arm and a little gripper. But I think we can do other things. So once we get better at it, we can probably have little like mini bot challenges. Um, I think first New England, um, so the New England district, um, they got sponsored by... So I'm, gonna, I'm not, I'm not going to say the sponsor because I'll get it wrong, but one of their sponsors donated one of these kits to like every um, FRC team up there or a lot of them. And they're doing some sort of mini bot challenge. So that may be something we can do internal to the team where we can have people be working on um, some sort of challenge. That's what I'm really excited about is we can have some sort of like goal at the end of this. So even if we do, we'll probably start with the miniature versions of the skills challenge autonomous tasks and things um but hopefully we can get a little bit further along with these as well um okay so what was i gonna say any okay so looking at the hardware um this all ties in directly to the vs code um, and WPI lib simulator. So you actually, the, the software is actually running on our computer and it's just connecting to the Romy and sending the um, information it needs back and forth. So the Romy is sending like the sensor data back to the computer and the computer is just kind of sending how fast the motor should be going um, and any of that information. But the actual software is running on um, your desktop or laptop, um, which means we're not worried about like how much, how pow powerful it is or any sort of anything like that. So there might be some lag and stuff since it has to go over Wi-Fi, but it, it's normally pretty good. Um, WPI Lib does have a sample um, program. This is mostly an unmodified sample. I was trying to play with a couple things in the like getting the field 2D thing to work in the dashboard that isn't working yet. Um, so there's some lines of code that have been changed, but not much. All of the actual robot drive code and everything is all the exact same. Um, so it comes ready to go with a, um, kind of drivetrain enabled. So the whole robot, you'll be able to drive it with just the sample code, uh, without us having to do any other thing. Um, and it just kind of works. There's a couple auto routines that are already set up. Um, so if people remember from last semester, we talked about some of the subsystems and commands, um, how subsystems kind of define what our robot's able to do and commands allow us to do them, um, to use those sort of definitions to do individual tasks. Um, so it already has some commands like arcade drive. So this is how we'd be able to drive it with a gamepad or the keyboard for the, in this case. Um, or it also has certain things like autonomous distance where it can tell it, okay, I want to drive um, half a meter. I believe that's, is that going to be timeout? We can see what it is. Yeah, speed. Oh, speed, inches, and then which drivetrain. So it's um, half speed backwards for 10 inches, turn half speed 180 degrees, drive um, 
half speed for 10 inches, turn, half speed for 180 degrees. Um, so you can see you could make whatever command you wanted. So if you wanted a certain path that it needed to follow, you could have it drive different distances and turns. If you just wanted to do kind of the drive straight turn, drive straight turn, um, Auton style method, this works already, um, which we'll probably do initially to get used to this kind of thing. Um, and then our goal is going to be able to ramp up all the way to doing um, path following where the robot's able to kind of drive in arcs and not needing to just drive straight turn in place, drive straight, turn in place. Um, because being able to smoothly drive around things and drive a, following an actual path is going to be a lot faster than anything that's just drive straight, turn, drive straight, turn. Um, okay, so um, the way it all connects, as long as your um, Wi-Fi is connected, which I'm going to do right now so I can get connected up to the Rami, or the Romi, um, whenever you just hit deploy, um, it brings up the simulator and it will launch our um, software. So hopefully this works because we're doing it live. There we go, except it moved over. I'm bringing it into the window. All right. So yeah, so I was trying to get the field working so it would like know where the robot is. It didn't seem to be working earlier. Um, and some of the key mapping is a little awkward. Uh, I wonder if I can actually change that. Um, so you can you can change like what the keyboard bindings are, because um, I think we need um, we need these to we need access two to be our turn axis I think to make this work with the Romi properly. Um, so I'm going to clear axis zero and make these A and D. Um, and I'm going to change these to have the same key rate and decay rate. So that means like how fast does it, um, how fast does it change while you hold it and how fast does it change once you let it go? Um, so if you have like a zero decay rate, it will not change at all. So you can like have some buttons that just raise an axis, like a joystick axis, and it'll just like stay there, um, until you tell it to go back down. Um, these ones will currently, um, go up and then they'll come back down automatically. So we can test some of this. So you can see down here where it says like axis one. When I press W, it tells it to go forward. Um, this is the way the joystick is. That's forward and backwards or kind of flipped, but that's fine. Um, and then now when I move axis two, I can do A and D to do the same thing. So the, the normal WASD um, kind of moving around in PC games one that should now kind of move our robot, hopefully. So if I move this into teleop, um, I don't actually know if I can. Oh, we can see it on. I have to pull back up here. So if we move this to here, oh, I should be able to have the robot move. Oh, wait. Maybe. Maybe not. Tele up. Okay. Oh, there it goes. It just didn't. Oh, I have to have the. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's an interesting problem. Oh, there's a window focus issue. Uh, <laughs> give me a second. Um, I have to be able to show that picture and have this window in focus. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Um, all right. So now, there we go. So now the wheels turn. If I hit W or if I hit S, um, A and D, they actually turn. So we could drive this around a little bit if we needed to. I have it on a little, one of the battery cases I'm using as the block to, when we're testing stuff. Um, but now it should, yeah, so we can drive around a little bit. Um, I don't want it to drive off my desk. Um, and that's just running the keyboard in the simulator and everything, um, which works well enough. Um, there's definitely some stuff that we still have to figure out. Like you can see like the gyro, even while it's sitting still, um, the gyros which are supposed to measure like how far it's turned and things are kind of going um, a little hectic. They're not quite calibrated. Um, what was the other thing we didn't show? Oh, there is a, there's a full, the nice thing about the WPI interface is there's a full, um, there's a full web interface that you can log into on the um, Romy. So it lets you do a lot of things. You can check how the system is going, but you can also come in and see the different um, outputs. You can like calibrate the gyro. Um, there's some other things you can do. We can eventually do um, vision processing on here and learn some of the vision processing things. Um, 
there's a lot of different stuff that we can look at eventually as we get further along. Um, that kind of just all works. And then most of this, all the code largely translates directly to the FRC robot code. So there's some things that won't because these don't have the exact same motor controllers we're using and some of that, but a lot of the, all the same logic and everything is gonna translate all that kind of the layout of the code, the structure, all that is exactly the same as we'll use on our competition robots. So whenever, if you have a brand new Visual Studio window, um, you can just do like what new window, as long as you have this, um, the WPI lib um, live W, you can click on it and you can get a whole lot of options. Um, one of them is create new project. Um, so when we went through and created the new, or when I went through and created the new Romy project, we created it by example. Um, we told it we're doing Java. And then you can select through this big list of all the possible different sample or example code. Um, so this is also where we'll start looking through a lot of stuff as we're like, okay, how do we do a um, different, all the different autonomous codes, a lot of those have examples in here. So you can create the example project, read through it, see what's happening and like copy it over into whatever project you're working on. Um, so if we wanted to figure out how to do state space drive simulation, we could click on that and we could figure out how to do a state space drive on our Romy project, which is another way to um, do some of the path following and things and getting the drive. So there's a lot of different things like that that we could get going. But what we used is we just used Romy reference to build up that one so we could get like how the Romy is going to work and get the default code because that has some of the, that changes a little bit to make sure it knows how to deploy to the Romy and not to our actual robot at all. Um, so we just do that and then you can select whatever folder you want. I normally use GitHub um, and then you can create a project name, um, team number and hit generate project. Um, when I made the Romy one, I didn't click enable desktop, or I clicked enable desktop support the first time and it didn't like it. When I did it again without it, it was fine. So I don't know if there's something different in how it deals with its uh, Gradle files and things. I'm not really sure. It could have also just been a weird thing the first time. Um, but this seems to work fine and you just get a brand new project. Um, and so you can do that for all sorts of the different ones too. So if anytime you want to see any thing in code and just how like an example of how to do it and dig through. This is one of the ways that I learned a lot of software was just looking at the examples all the time. Um, and these are one of the easiest examples to get. And they're normally pretty well documented. So they tell you why they wrote certain bits of code, which is very convenient. Unlike just being able to look at other teams, which aren't always documented and you don't really know um, why they necessarily did something. Um, this is actually a pretty, these are really good examples most of the time of how to do stuff. Um, and I definitely still have to learn a lot. Like I don't know a lot of these ones at the bottom, a lot of the control side I have not done in the WPI lab, um, format yet. So that's a lot of what I'll be figuring out too. Um, but then you basically, as soon as you hit, okay, you just get, whoa, okay. Everything went away. Um, you end up getting something like this that you can start editing. Um, when you just look in source, you can look at all the source files. 